Hey guys, here I am with Egyptian Bee Man, Bishoy from Equipool. Uh, thanks for coming on. Happy um, to be here. Well, we were chatting about this. We were, what I want to talk about in this video, we were talking, uh, we briefly talked about Masternodes earlier in the SafeCoin uh, team meeting. And we touched upon shared Masternodes and a few other things. And this was something I wanted to talk about with you um, today because, well, this is something I... I my previous view on shared masternodes was that I wanted to do it, but I was obviously very concerned because there's lots of shared masternode, gro uh, shared master masternode groups where the people are anonymous. Um, but you're running a very successful and a very popular shared masternode service. You're not anonymous. Um, I'm, well, not to show Equipool too much. Uh, if I show people uh, uh, the website, um, bring this on. So... I've been mining on Equipool for like several months now. Um, it was initially my backup pool. I used Mining Speed and then I switched around when Mining Speed went down and I just kept it that way. Um, but I've always been happy with it. I love the stats that it's shown, so I'm really happy with it from a pool perspective. Um, but you've got, if I bring this up, you've got a, a masternode section. You go to mn.1ds.us and if I type that in, I push return, it will bring me to your spreadsheet, and this is what you use. It's Google Sheets, I believe, isn't it? Yep, that's correct. Um, and this is your whole spreadsheets for um, your shared masternodes. And if, I mean, if just looking across all the spreadsheets, anyone can go, go and look at this. You've got all the stats for everything. You've got the, what people have deposited, reinvested. You've got the return on investment percentages and all that as well. There's a lot of information there. Um, so, yeah, this is something I find very interesting because... Um, I think a lot of people had the same concerns as me from a masternodes because what miners like myself do is we mine coins for like a, a couple of days or a week and then we then we realize I don't have enough for a masternode and I'm going to have to mine for a long period of time. Um, and I'd, this is where I'd, I'd love to start getting involved in shared masternodes because of that, but also because, well, it saves you a lot of hassle. Someone else is doing all the technical work. You know? Yeah, um, there's, there's definitely a lot of work that goes into running masternodes, um, especially the more you have, the more servers you have to maintain. To manage capacity, you can't put too many on one server, and sometimes some nodes start consuming too much resources, but you don't want to shut down masternodes, so you got to keep a, a happy medium of available resources and all of them. So are you using dedicated servers, or are you using VPS? Like, VPS. You know, like, oh, so just using like DigitalOcean and those kind of websites? Uh, I use Vulture primarily. I use uh, right, okay. OVH also for some. Um, those are my two primary ones. Um, but VPSs are nice because you get the ability to put them throughout the world. Um, yeah. When you have a dedicated server, they cost so much that you don't want to get too many of them. Yeah, I think cloud hosting is definitely the way to do it. Um, yeah. do, does Vulture, do they allow you to deploy? Like, like you set it up and then you can deploy a similar version in a different VPS? So that's actually something that's really nice that Vulture does. And OVH is another service I use. And they do that, but they charge you. What it's, it's like creating a template, essentially, is what you're doing. Right. Um, yeah, I've, and, I've seen it in the WordPress world where they allow you staging and they allow you to set up a template and then you can deploy it for, for a web design company. Um, I believe you've got one as well, web design company. And basically, you set up a template for a, a website or whatever, and then you just you can deploy it to as many domains as you want. Yeah, so with this, what you do is you you get a new server, you set it up, you put all the configuration in place, um, you enable IPv6 because several masternodes allow you to do that, so you can have multiple masternodes on the same server, um, put all your configuration in place, and then you take a snapshot of the server. And then you can just, when you when you come to expand and add more servers, you can just restore that snapshot into so a new just, server. But then... So you're just restoring the snapshot and then it's just like changing some of the configuration or? Well, after that, you have to sync in. You have to send it to the actual, the coin uh, daemon um, and then push up an image of the blockchain and then configure each coin separately. But at least you don't have to set up a whole server every time. Right. And now, if you want that... to, like say you're doing Safecoin super nodes. Um, if you want to, you can actually create a snapshot for just Safecoin. That way, when you restore it, all you have to do is sync up the chain, update the configuration with your master node or whatever configuration, and then start it up. 
that's one way. I do a very custom setup where uh, my servers, if you look on that spreadsheet, actually the last page will show you like the servers and then what nodes I have running on each server. And that's more for me, not necessarily for everybody else, but I'm, I try to be as transparent as possible so they can see like how many servers I put on each node. That's um, ridiculous. 76 master nodes. <laughs> yeah, actually it just went down from 87 because uh, Nex coin just increase their collateral from 10,000 to 25,000, which is why I commented about that <laughs> during yeah, the meeting. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So when they did that, I had to shut down all the master nodes and then, yeah, uh, because you no longer meet the, the minimum requirement. Yep. And then you have to reinitialize each one with a new transaction. And so we went from, I don't know, like 24 master nodes or something down to eight or nine. So, so, it, so in start. that situation, essentially, the same number of people have invested the same amount of money, but it's now spread over nine instead of whatever it was before yeah. 24, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Just, it's because just a pain in the ass for you, but then basically. <laughs> kind of. I mean, the, the better thing is that you're actually not using as much server resources, but yeah. that's actually kind of worse for the chain uh, on the other side of it. Yeah. So I don't understand why a chain would do that. I think like the, the guys that manage the chain are probably thinking, okay, let's increase collateral it'll boost the price because people have to now buy more coins. Yes, but, but it's, now you've got, yeah, sometimes okay. it blows up in their face because you don't have the support for your nodes. Um, so I don't know. Like, this is something I still haven't set up my own master node and I need to, I'm looking at a few different coins to do this. Uh, but I do like the idea of shared master nodes. When I've looked at some coins like Zencash, Zencash is a project I think is pretty cool. Um, but one of the comments you see of everyone who set up a secure node and a super node, even people who say they've got technical experience, is that it's an absolute pain in the ass to set up. I'm seeing some of these new coins, though. Some of them might be kind of pump and dump coins, but I'm seeing some of them. And one of the selling points is that you have kind of one-click deploy master node things. Do like how many projects have you got there? There's like one, two, three. There's about ten or so. Is that how many you've got? Different ones. Um, yeah, right now. Do you are some of them one click deploys or or some or most of them quite technical? No, I think what you're talking about is more like GenCoin, uh, who offer basically you you pay a hosting fee of like five dollars a month, and then they have specific nodes ready to go. And so I don't know exactly how it works because I've never used it, but I think it's where you just basically you give them essentially the line of configuration that you use to start the master node, you pass that on to them and then they start the master node for you and you don't do anything. Um, right. I saw one, I think it was motion project and it was like three easy steps to deploy your master node, things like that, yeah. but I've not tried it myself. So the negative thing there is a, you have to have all the coins for the master node. Um, B, I think the fees are probably higher than usual. Um, and then C, you're not in control of the server. So the server can go down or, or the node can stop working at any moment. Like one problem that I've seen, and this happens to all master nodes, is sometimes they just they don't report back to the blockchain frequently enough. And so the blockchain will kind of kick them out. And so you have to restart them. And there's different things that you can do to minimize that. And I've, from what I've seen is with these services, you don't get the ability to fine tune the server to make sure that doesn't happen as frequently. Um, I've I mean, noticed I, that. I think this is, this is always a problem, I think, in any kind of software development where you make things more user friendly, but by doing so, you're restricting the number of options and control, you've got less yeah. control. Yeah. And so all they have is the ability to restart it, which sometimes you don't need to do. And restarting it is something you don't want to do because you have to wait another 16 plus hours sometimes to get start receiving payments again. Um, ah, right. But being able to control it yourself is actually the most optimal way, I think, the most profitable way. So how how long have you been running this now? Uh, it, you kind of touched upon the fact that this was more of, you know, like user demand more than anything else, and you weren't even looking to do this. Yeah, so like initially when I found out about Masternodes earlier this year, I, I hated the idea uh, because my background, I come from the Bitcoin Z community, um, and we're all about 
community and everybody, you know, we're trying to um, just build a bigger community and there's no big players and uh, everybody helps each other. We're trying to promote that kind of, you know, what we want the future to be. Um, and so when, when I looked at masternodes, I thought, okay, well, this is a great way to make rich people richer. Um, it yeah. doesn't give the little guy an opportunity to make more money. It's giving the rich people opportunity to make more money. And so I hated them. And then one day we're talking about it and my pool's discord server and everybody's like, why don't you host shared masternodes? And I'm like, okay, I'm already busy enough. I don't need more work. And then they kept talking about it for like a few hours and all of a sudden it just kind of. It went from, hey, why don't you, to, hey, you're going to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, <laughs> well, let's try it out. I'll set up a spreadsheet. Wait. You're right <laughs> what you're saying, though, because you manage, you've got Equipool, but is there not another 1DS pool that's got different coins on it as well? Yeah, I've got Equipool. And Equipool, managing is... a pool, you've got to, like I just saw with, with different coins forking, that requires a lot of work every time a coin forks or any kind of major torture, update. Torture, torture. And yeah. that's one pool, but you've got, because I, I signed up, Equipool's obviously, obviously was launched as an Equihash pool, but I've used 1DS for, I can't remember if it was a Lyra 2Z coin or something else. So you've got, is it two pools you've got then? Two? I've got Equipool for Equihash and then Crypto Pool for, it's a, it's a yen. And it's like, is that like Crypto Pool dot 1DS? Yeah. yeah. Dot US, right. And that pool can do pretty much any, uh, any altcoin except Ethereum and Equihash. And so originally, right. actually, I had Crypto Pool. And then I wanted to add Equihash, and Yimp didn't support it, and so I started Equipool. Ah, uh, right, okay. So that was more like kind of the structure primary. of it, just with the software, you had to start two separate pools. Yeah, I've never, there was I've never thought about that. How I, a lot of, sorry? What's that? No, I was just saying I haven't oh. thought about um, why a lot of the LIDA 2Z and those kind of pools don't have Ethereum. I hadn't really thought about it. Yeah, I think Ethereum is its own thing, and there is an open source Ethereum pool uh, software out there, but I've I, I don't know, I've kind of stayed away from Ethereum and all of the Ethash coins. Um, but it's know, the same with it's the same changed. with um, sorry, same with uh, Equihash. It's the same that you have to do it separately. So you couldn't put Equihash in the same pool as you actually can, but it, it was a option to purchase it. The guy who wrote Yim, which is an open source for a crypto pool. Um, he he removed or he never put in Equihash into the pool, but I've right. seen that he'll sell it to pool operators. And I don't, I don't know. I'm an open source guy. I don't yeah. care to buy it because then if if I buy it and something changes, like for example, this fork, I'd have to probably buy another copy to support the changes for all these forks. And I prefer open source solutions. So when I did some searching, I found uh, Xenom, which is what Equipool runs off of. Um, and it's open source and, the community actually kind of died off, and now we're bringing it back. We've started a new community for Xenop, so all the pool owners are now getting together and updating everything and hopefully making it great again. Well, ah, it, the, the, the thing I found, found interesting was I, had, I don't think I've seen any mention of shared masternodes. I don't think I've seen it on your official website. Have you got it listed somewhere? I actually recently put it in a navigation at the top. You should see shared. Oh, right, and, right. Okay. I, I hadn't noticed that before. I, I hadn't noticed it's, that. It's hidden. It's subtle. Ah, right. Okay. Um, I, it's a slow release. So, um, like, um, I was just looking there on, on the spreadsheet. It says that you charge 2.5%, which is pretty low, I guess, when you think about the fact you don't have to pay for a, a shared master, no, a shared VPS and all that. Not a shared VPS, a VPS. Um, but, so, Think about for, for anyone watching just now, I'm sure there's a lot of people like myself who thought, right, you know, the master node requirement is 10,000. I've got 500 coins or 1,000 coins. And I asked you earlier, I said, is there any minimum to deposit? And you said, no. Is there like, is there kind of unofficial, well, don't just send me one coin kind of thing? Or is it, you know, do most people try and send so, a significant amount? So I run my master nodes differently than most people. Um, First off, you mentioned the pool fee is 2.5%. It used to actually be 1.5, and I just recently increased it because people kept telling me this is too low. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do do so other pools charge more? Other shared master most, nodes? Most shared master nodes charge 4 or 5. Some charge 10 and 11%. Um, and that's so you can get a fancy website with yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff. Um, anyway, so 
yeah, so I increased it to 2.5, um, which is still low. And I, but that's that's my thing. I don't like to charge a lot of fees. I'm not looking to get rich off this. I, I run master notes for myself, so I run master notes for other people. Um, but I've been adding automation, um, and so right now, like in the in the Discord server, we have a deposit bot. So basically, you send transactions to the deposit address, and then you do dot D and then put your transaction ID and it'll automatically process your deposits. So um, you don't have to, you don't have to handle private messages or anything like that. It's nope. just all automated. And that's why there's no minimum because I don't have to do anything for it. Deposits are ah, automatic. Right. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Before yeah. initially when I first started it, like people would post their transaction ID and how much it was. And I'd have to go into the chain, validate that that's actual amount. Yeah. And... That's, that's not something you can scale up. That's exactly. And that's you why duplicate yourself. And that's why I haven't advertised the master note servers too much because it, it's been, I started from nothing like where with Xenomp or a pool, you install a pool that does everything for you. Well, for master nodes, there isn't really anything that does that. And so I've been building the infrastructure as I go along. And so the more I build out, the more I automate things, then the more I advertise it to get more people in because I'm doing less work. And so I can support people. How, how do you handle growth and how do you handle scaling up because like if, if i take one coin um i think you've got snow gem there what's what's the minimum requirement for that for a master node Ten thousand. Uh, Ten thousand, right so say you've got in fact actually well, i was going to use an example but you've got um where is it you've got 12 master nodes for snow gem um so you can see that in, in your spreadsheet um so say someone you know myself and a few others start sending snow gem to you automatically you need to then create a 13th masternode. Do you keep funds for each coin available for that? You know, some like spare coins for each one so that you can just implement a 13th or do you have to go, oh, hold on, someone's sent this amount of money? Because the way the masternodes work, obviously there's no benefit from from having more money than, than than's required because you're not going to get any more of the block reward unless they've right. implemented some sort of proof of stake thing into it. But... So this is where I run it differently than most master nodes. Most master node, shared master nodes, the way they do it is you buy a share of a master node. And so they'll show, they'll sell like, say it's 10,000 coins, they'll sell them in, you know, a 10 pack. And so each person buys a hundred or a thousand coins at a time. And then there's 10 people on one master node. And then they make the rewards from that master node. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm a pool owner. And I'm a miner, and I said, why don't we just do a pool? So basically what it is, you deposit, and everybody deposits coins into the pool. And then as mo enough coins become available, I start a masternode. And then at the end of the week, we do weekly. We had a vote on how frequently they do payouts. And actually, most people picked uh, seven days. So we do weekly payouts. Um, and at the end of the week, what I do is basically I take all the rewards that have been generated, and split them among all the miners based on how much you deposited exactly the way the pool does it for mining. And so it's exactly the same way. You're not earning just from a master node that you've deposited into. You're earning from all the master nodes, but your share of all the master nodes. Right. So it's not like you're getting 10% of master node five. You're getting like 1% of the whole thing. That's Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. And you can see the stats for like percent of one master node, percent of all master nodes, and I try to keep all the stats in there. Yeah, well, you've got two different sheets here for if, if I can show people this. Um, for each coin, so you've got XSG, uh, and then you've got XSG TX, and every coin seems to have that. Every master node. Um, so the XSG one, you're seeing deposited, reinvested, withdrawn, balance, percent of one master node, percent of pool. Estimated earnings, ROI, paid, ROI, gross. There's, a lot of, there's actually a lot of information to, bring, uh, to take in there. And the other one you've got, um, it looks like the transaction IDs. Um, I assume that's just for... Um, that's just to, that's just to clarify what Yeah, just to clarify what's actually going on, just like transparency. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of information there. I mean, um, what's, what's, I mean, is the ROI quite different across all the different coins? Yeah, some coins you make the ROA just ridiculously fast. Uh, other coins like Snow Gem is actually a fairly slow yielding coin. 
Right. Um, like if you look at, I think I've got HLD on there. There's a sheet for that. Yep. Uh, and that was just one person that said, hey, can you start up a Highland Coin Master? And I said, sure. So he sent me the coins. And within like three days, we made full ROI. Two, and so just, someone's get someone's get two hundred and forty seven percent out of way. Yeah, and that literally that that node is maybe one or two weeks old. Um so some coins are just earning a ton of but that, ROI. That's, that's the thing. I mean that that one you just showed me there, HLD. I can see why this person has done this because he doesn't have to manage master nodes. He's relying on someone like yourself who has a lot of experience with managing pools and master nodes. Two and a half percent to save someone the hassle. You know, you could make someone might spend a full day doing this and then set it up wrong. So you're charging two and a half percent, and this guy's made. So was that in seven days? He's made two hundred forty-seven percent out of way. I don't. You could switch to the transaction. I think. Oh, um, see. I tend to collapse them when they get too long. Yep. But yeah, he deposited it was on seven twenty, so it's been about fifteen days. So two That's, weeks. I'm. I'm. <laughs> I'm starting to reconsider what I'm doing in cryptocurrency. <laughs> Maybe it's time to sell my GPUs. Uh, this is one of the things, you know, I find this subject interesting because when masternodes have been a little bit discouraged, because, you know, obviously there's a lot of these Ponzi schemes and scams going out there. Um, but when you're looking at how low some GPU returns are in the future, from a financial point of view, masternodes make a lot of sense. And it's really just this high restriction that's stopping a lot of people like myself maybe getting involved as soon as we should have yeah and like i said i initially i hated the idea of masternodes just because it felt like it was a means of making rich people richer but then yeah. seeing and running a shared masternode service you know we can still compete anybody can get into it um and like i said like my pool there's no minimum so i have people that will deposit you know five coins ten coins for xsg i have other people that will throw in one thousand two thousand at a time so it's really kind of whatever you can afford and you get back based on how much you deposit. So everybody's earning the same, you know, respectively. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. I, I definitely need to revisit this. I think um, I'm going to have to sit back, look at some of these coins that you've got uh, in the masternodes and evaluate how I, I move forward because, you know, j just kind of, when we're talking just now, I'm getting a lot of ideas in my head, but I'm just thinking like, I could look at different coins, look at the the you know what the minimum requirement is for a masternode. Then I can go well. I mine this for a week, and I've got half the requirement. And then I just throw it in, throw it into the masternodes, and then essentially forget about it and come back in a few months' time. Once a week, pick another coin, put it in, forget about it, check the spreadsheet every week or two. Um, yeah, and a lot of what a lot of people do is they will mine a coin for a specific amount of time and then deposit that amount of money into the pool. And then what uh, I have a feature called reinvestment percentage. And so you can choose to either reinvest the profits that you make from the master node, or you can choose to get payouts and you could do like a percentage. So I have some people that will reinvest 50% of what they make back into their balance. And so their balance grows and they earn more of a, of a master node. Um, and then, the other 50% they'll put in like an exchange address. And so every week they get some coins in the exchange that they can go sell. And, and can they exchange? Yeah. So they could exchange some coins and keep some invested. Mm -hmm. And that's it's pretty, it's, it's almost like some sort of kind of banking investment firm. <laughs> it's, it's quite good. good it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely need to look into this. Um, this is when we touched upon it earlier and we were speaking on Discord. This is why I wanted to do a video because I, I discussed this with people who watched my channel last month and I said that I'm really I'm really keen on shared master nodes, but I'm just hesitant because of you know And you should be. Yeah, um, that's the actually, thing. Like, well, I mean I think you should always be hesitant when you're sending money to someone else. Yeah. And um, I'm I'm really big on um trust. So basically like I've had I've had people come into my Discord server and say, you know, why should I trust you with my coins? And I say, you shouldn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. You know, I, if I were in your shoes, I would sit in a Discord server for about a week and watch how things work and yep. make sure that they're handling themselves in a trustable fashion and watch how they handle problems if problems arise and different things like that. And if you, if you give yourself enough time and watch how somebody works, you can tell if there's something fishy going on. 
Yeah. Um, you should never join something and, you know, from day one go, I trust you. Here's, you know, 50,000 coins of something. No, you should never do that. This is crypto. It's that, the, the that chance is, that... Yeah, this has been a recurring theme on my channel the last few weeks and I've, I've become more frustrated with just the whole everyone remaining anonymous. Uh, one of my problems with it, not to go too off topic, but one of my problems with all these new coins is that they're putting 100% of the risk on the miner or the investor and they're asking for money before, you know, on day one. Um, but there obviously has to be some trust when you're sending coins to someone else. Um, I'm really excited about this. I'm, 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 what I'm thinking about doing is maybe just mining some coins or buying some coins and then trying this out. Um, just hang out in Discord and see how it all works. But I think even from, I'll be honest, you know, because obviously I'm, I'm like yourself. I'm very busy. I've got websites, two YouTube channels. I've got, I try and have a life as well. But just the idea of just paying someone two and a half percent to handle it all is very attractive to me. Um, yeah. But again, this comes back to the same, you know, the same principle of pools is that, you know, you're letting someone else take care of a lot of the technical stuff that you don't want to take care of. Um, and you're pulling your, your resources with a lot of other miners, a lot of other uh, cryptocurrency investors. Yeah, so, and this is why I say I rent more. And I don't know why people started doing this whole you buy shares in a master node because that's just, to me, that's it's not transparent. Um, it's really hard to measure how many other people are in this master node. I mean, you could do the math, but then you don't know how, I don't know. Something about it doesn't feel right to me. <laughs> So uh, what's that? Sorry, someone is asking. Say you can buy ten percent of a masternode, or you can buy. Yeah. Ah, right. Okay. I never cared for those. I, I've always appreciated, it. and actually doing the whole, you know, running it as a pool. Uh, one major benefit in my eyes is that when we're close to the next masternode, everybody on Discord will like, let's all hop on this coin and see if we can finish it off. And it's happened several ah, right. times. It actually builds a greater sense of community and everybody's all excited about it. Everybody's doing deposits every couple of hours to try to get to the next master node. And it's, it's actually really neat. Yeah, um, that's quite good. So if a new coin comes out or you decide to add a, a master node for a coin that's you know just not added yet, everyone can say, oh, we're 20% away from it. Why don't we sell some coins and get the funds together? Yeah, if you look at the spreadsheet at the bottom of that big table at the top, um, you'll see how many master nodes are started and then how many we have up and then how many coins we need for the next one. And so it's kind of the, the daily driver. People will look at that and see how many we need to get to the next master node. I'm going to have to take a closer look at that. Um, I like the way that you've got it set up though, is um, oh, it's got age, balance, earnings, total ROI, 2.5% fee and all that. It's good how you've got it set up. And you've got yeah, master nodes one, two, parent. three. It, it's overkill when you first look at it, but then after you use it for a little bit, you find that all that data is useful, uh, especially when there's a problem. So if something goes wrong with uh, transfers or something and there's something missing or the numbers are off, having all that data makes it really easy to track down what happened. Uh, yeah. So like a recent yeah, example- from, from your point of view as well. Yeah, so like last week, um, Snow Gem, because it's a Zcash fork and they have shielding, um, when I when I ran the payments for that, um, it didn't. The node reported a different balance than what was actually available, um, and so I did the report. I take a screenshot of what everybody's payments are. I post it on Discord, and then after I made the post and processed payments, somebody said, "Hey, I got like half as much as I should," and so. Um, that seemed really weird to me. And so I started looking into it and I was like, okay, there's a lot of factors that could affect payment. It could be how many nodes went online or offline during the week. Um, if any of the nodes, like of my nodes went offline. So I checked them all, make sure they're all online. Um, so anyways, there's a lot of steps in it. And then I started checking it all. And then what I found out was uh, the node reported that there was a balance that was like half as much as it should. But then when it did the shielding, it sent all the coins over that it should have. And so being able to look through all that history, I found out that there's like 1,500 coins that were sitting in a private address that should have been paid but never were. So I was able to do a second payment. So having all that data there, as overwhelming as it may be to somebody who's new, is actually yeah. really helpful when 
find you know tracking down yeah, issues so it's, so it's overkill until you actually need it and then yeah yeah exactly. it's useful <laughs> having it there well i mean i don't know how other shared masternode groups and services work um, I, I mean are they operating more in the blind you know more in the dark as far as um yeah he's not not providing of. enough stats because you don't you were saying earlier that some people have asked for a website and i was saying well for me i'm just happy with the spreadsheet um but yeah. People I'm like sure, anonymity, you see, I yeah. think, is the biggest thing. Um, and I, I can understand that. Um, to me, I don't care about my identity as much. Um, and from what I've seen, you know, asking around in Discord, people don't care. You're already in Discord. People are, yeah. see you there. Um, I think what some people worry about is people can see how many coins they have. Yeah. Uh, but I've got several whale, whales, I call them whales, in Discord, and they don't really care. Um, yeah. and the well, thing I mean, is you, like, can, you can always move funds like that around addresses anyway sort of the pool actually I has I have be, security so features be. built in um, yes that's actually true you can go to a different pool put some funds I there I suppose it would, it would be tied to a username though I, I suppose it's tied to your username and your actual ID number so you like and that's one thing is if you make a deposit from a discord account you can't make a withdrawal from another Discord account and you can't change anything from another. So you have to make sure you have access to that same Discord account every time. Ah, right, right. Well, that, that makes sense. So yeah, yeah, because someone can't come on with my username and then you click and go, yeah, yeah, I'll send the money there. And then you find out that the unique ID is completely different. Yeah, um, and we actually saw that, I we saw that recently. Validate. The what, sorry? The bots I have in there validate everything. So right. I... The, I've done a lot of work to remove myself from the equation because I'm a human and I make mistakes where a bot will validate everything and actually validate transactions with the chain and whatnot. And it's fully automated. So no, that's good. They, I, I did a video last week and I was talking about a coin called Zoom coin and I hadn't even seen it, but basically it was announced and within 15 days, the project was abandoned because someone realized it was lying about the crypto bridge listing. So, the same as usual, block one, selling masternodes, they pre-sold, must have made thousands of dollars pre-selling masternodes. And basically, they were in the Discord saying, we've sent money to, I can't remember what the guys use. There's a guy from CryptoBridge, he's one of the main guys there. And they said, we've sent it to him. They took a screenshot of it. But what it was, was just this guy in Discord with the same username. And Jeez, when someone contacted the real person, he's like, no, that's fake. That's not me. Um Ouch. And it, it sounds it sounds very simple, but a lot of people aren't do, you know checking these kind of things because a screenshot is quite easy to manipulate, um, right. and you do need people in the community to to verify these things. But that's good yep. that, that that's good that's in there so that no one can, well, you know, imit, um, imitate someone else and just say, oh, can you send my funds there? And I've actually had people try um, unsuccessfully, <laughs> and uh, to anybody out there who's thinking about trying it. It's an insta ban. So yeah. the moment you try to scam somebody else's coins, you're immediately banned from the server. Well, it's kind of short sighted as well because you'd be removing yourself from a service that could make you a lot of money. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So well, uh, well, thanks, thanks for uh, you know what about thirty odd minutes now. <laughs> uh, thanks, Trump. thanks for uh, chatting to me today, Bishoy. Um, me. Oh, chatting to me again because we just <laughs> chatted for two hours of the safe coin meeting. That's um, true. Yeah, I, I do find this interesting. I think I'm going to have a think about this in the next few days and maybe I'm going to look at the coins and see which one's the best to mine or buy. And then I'm always happy to start new, to add new coins. Um, we've actually been, I've been cleaning house. So I've been looking at, we've removed uh, SLTC, which ended up being a bust and looking at uh, deleting another coin, which ended up failing. So um we're kind of looking for some new coins. So if you have any ideas of good master nodes, let us know and we'll I add. mean, um, that's something I need to look at. I mean, obviously I'm aware of certain ones like Zencast and you've got the expensive ones like Dash. I, I guess yeah. you want to find one where it's a solid project, but the price isn't going to put people off, but the return is good as well. Um, yeah, it's difficult because like, okay, so we added, there's a lot of demand. I call it a lot of demand. Several people were asking me to add Shield XSH. Yeah, uh, that was when it was so, added to Safe Trade. Through. Yeah, and so I added it to the Masternode, and their collateral is two hundred thousand coins, which is a lot. Yeah. Um, and What's the total Overcast, supply for the coin? Do you know? I don't know. Um, it's got to be pretty high for collateral. Yeah, it could be like Bitcoin Z, like with hundreds of millions or something. 
Probably. Still high, still high regardless. Yeah. But with 200,000 collateral, you know, over two weeks, I think that we've had that cheat up, we've only gotten 100,000 coins. And so, like, I'm, I'm leery to add coins that are expensive to get into unless yeah. we are very close to fulfilling a master node. Because then, you know, you could have taken those coins and gone to another shared master node pool that maybe has more people for that coin yeah. and gotten it immediately. So it's a fine balance. Sometimes it's a hit or miss. Sometimes you get enough people and you have enough coins and you can just get up and go. Well, you don't want people to buy on main coins and then you say, sorry, we don't have enough. And then you exactly. send them all back. I mean, worst um, case scenario is you send the coins back. It's not a big deal. But I feel bad that, you know, you put your coins here for a week or two weeks and earn nothing. And then you get nothing for it. Uh, you could have made something somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at the other end of the scale, I was chatting to the guys. I think I'm going to do an interview with them soon. It was Vertical Coin. That's also mm -hmm. in Safe Trade. But I think their, their minimum requirement, I think it's like $150 or something. It's really cheap. Yeah, I think it's, a, a, a it's uh, 37 think it's, coins. Yeah, but I think I mined it for like a day or so and I had like 300 coins or so. So yeah. I don't think that's a um, a big requirement. But then can you have it too low as a requirement as well where it's too easy? or? So a vertical coin is uh, bittersweet for me. Um, they, we have several people who are what I would consider vertical coin whales. They have yep. a lot of coins. And so we've got, I think, 13 masternodes. Um, and the problem with them is it's an IPv4 coin, which means right. for every masternode, I have to set up another server. And I don't want to set up too many servers with just one masternode on it if it's not yielding enough. So like looking at the weekly return with my 2.5% 2, 2 feed, it's like, I don't know, 30 cents or something. And so to me, financially, it doesn't make sense to set up 10 servers if I'm making 30 cents off each, but having to pay 5 or $10 off. Uh, this one. was something that actually got brought up in the team meeting tonight. I don't know if you remember this. Uh, was it Sandy or something? When we were talking about the price and the minimum restrictions or the minimum requirements, sorry, for a masternode, he pointed out that, well, you still have to pay for a VPS. You still have to right. pay for a server. Yep. And this is something you do sometimes forget about that if it's too low and, and the, the requirement is too low and the return is too low, then right. financially it's just not going to make not going to make sense. You'd be better whatever the, you spend on a VPS, just buy the coins. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a fine balance, and so for some of these coins, I have to limit it. You know, I say we've got this many master nodes. We're going to pause until we get enough. Like the other coins catch up, that we need yep. more servers across the board. Then I'll start up more nodes for this. And so it's kind of a fine balance. And I try to communicate as much as possible in Discord. And well, I think, I mean, with that coin, a couple of months down the line, if the price went up by five times or 10 times, it's a, it's a different story. That's what we're all hoping on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so it's interesting because you obviously, as, as fixed as you are in, in getting everything automated and all that, price is still one of the biggest factors and one of the, you know, the, one of the, one of the main factors that will determine whether you should have a master node or not, or whether it makes money yeah. or not. Yeah, it's not just a blind immediately start it, immediately start it. Um, you have to think about it with you know pure logic and say, does it make sense? Uh, and there's times when, for some coins that we've been able to see, like just like the ones that start off and then eventually turn out to be a scam. Um, yeah. We'll start off. We've started off with brand new coins several times. And then everybody starts mining it. We get a master node, we get a second, third, fourth. And then we start seeing hints that it's a scam. And so we'll shut them all down, make payments to everybody, sell your coins, let's get out before they bust. And so you yeah. kind of have to you know, work as a community. And it's actually really neat to have that because I'm really busy. And so I can't keep track of every coin. But yeah. with, with the community that's out there, there, yeah, with the community we've got there, we've got some people that are following vertical coin. We've got some people following snow gym and safe coin so everybody kind of reports back at random times and if you watch a discord server you can really stay on top of things without having to follow everybody at all times so it's really neat yeah that's good i mean i've found that myself as well where people will say have you seen that coin have you heard about that coin i'm like i haven't read anything about it there's just right. there's so many projects to take uh, just give me the anyway. tldr <laughs> yeah not even just follow or be aware of but to actually track it and look at news and blog announcements yeah. and then see what's happening a lot of the time 
most coins don't actually have an active blog either. You have to go into Telegram or Discord and then... And follow the server. Yeah, and sometimes it's reading between the lines. Why hasn't right. there been an announcement? Why aren't you following what's on the roadmap? Why are you having public arguments and just, you know, looking at the cracks and seeing what's wrong or what's right? Yeah, um, that's true. But that's cryptocurrency. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Never a dull day. Well, thanks thanks a lot for coming on today. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully I can chat to you again in the future. Um, for myself moving forward, and I'm sure a lot of you guys watching the video as well, uh, I'm going to look at some of the, these spreadsheets. I'm going to look at the coins, hang out in the Discord a few days, uh, and then make a decision as to which one I'm going to try out. I think, was, I think from, from my point of view as well, from, from a YouTuber's point of view, it would be an interesting case study to just track an initial investment when I break even, um, how it all works and all that as well. So best of luck with the project. It sounds like it's, it's going really well. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll keep tracking some master notes, maybe make some suggestions in the future as well. <laughs> Sounds good. It will be here. Yeah. Well, thanks, b Shoy, and thanks to everyone who's watching. Um, I'll speak to you all very soon. Cheers, guys. See ya.